Hello everyone, I am the Chosen One Legend here, as always joined by my co-host. Hi, I'm Kai, also known as Faskarain. And welcome back to the Bunch of Jokers podcast, where we talk Nintendo news and gaming highlights from the past month. And, uh, hello? Is, is this thing on? <laughs> I, I, am I all alone? Is, is anyone there? I think I need a bigger gun, Kai. I thought gun, we had some Kai. tech issues. I was very confused, <laughs> and then you said the second line, and I was like, oh. I oh, there, there it is. <laughs> Xenoblade fucking X. What the heck? It's a month. This has been a weird month where Nintendo have announced every single thing but the Switch 2, right? It's <laughs> Yeah, well, this was meant to be another month of like, okay, it's like month 14 of like us waiting for the Switch 2 to come out. Um, yeah. You know, remember when we thought it was going to be alongside Tears of the Kingdom and stuff like that? Jeez. Um, and and <laughs> oh, now we're gosh, like, yeah. oh, so we were expecting to just sit here and be like, oh, there's nothing else happening this month. Sorry, guys. Like, Sony had another terrible direct or something. But no, like, we actually just have had, like, a ton of big announcements, and the biggest one probably being Xenoblade X. Just casually on YouTube getting a remaster, you know, just. Just they're just, just you know small things. <laughs> they're just shadow dropping loads of things on YouTube and Twitter, and it, it's wild. Of course, we'll discuss those as well as what we've been playing, and there will be timestamps in the description below if you want to check out different sections. But let's just get things started here. We're our first segment of the podcast. Can't have a podcast without news, baby. Where we go over the specific news highlights, and th- the first thing I have, which. Funnily enough, might be the weirdest thing this month, which is saying a lot. Nintendo announced a, a clock, Alamo. It, it's <laughs> it's a, a clock that can like monitor your movements, so it will know when you get up, and then play Nintendo sound effects like the Guardian theme if you want to, you know, have nightmare fuel. But it only works if you're single, because they know their target audience. It's <laughs> it's about the most Nintendo thing you can imagine, right? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, it's just another one of their weird things of like, hey, we've made our own version of these. Um, You know, it's it's a funny one. I've not even looked too much into it because it's just so silly. Um, But, you know, sure, they want to make that go right ahead. Um, You know, I'm sure I'm sure some people have lapped it up. Um, you know, I, I, I've i loved all the memes that have come out of it. I think that's the number one thing for me, just seeing all the Xenoblade characters screaming as a wake up <laughs> call is, is brilliant to me. Yeah, I, it's like, it's a hundred quid or something, so like, yeah, I'm not going to buy this. It's, yeah. I don't need, it, it's a novelty, it's more of a gimmick than anything, but I kind of like that Nintendo just do these weird things every now and then, where it's like, sure, that there's there's an audience for this, a very specific one, but uh, like you say, the memes are absolutely the best part of it. So uh, I really hope that they do actually add like uh, Z- you know Xenoblade themes or something later down the line because it is getting updates. You know, um, I-, I want to fall asleep to the peaceful sounds of "Huh, yeah, uh, uh, uh" from NLA. <laughs> but uh, one day maybe. Uh, yeah. And to be honest. That's probably all we have to say about a Nintendo clock, because what else do you say about it? So, uh... <laughs> yeah, it's an alarm clock. <laughs> yep, it does what it sounds like, it wakes you up. But, um, they, they've kept going, because one of the other weird things, which we really also won't have too much to say on, they announced an NSO playtest, where you could sign up to be part of a test for some potential NSO future thing. Uh, which I am, technically I got into it, you're not really supposed to talk about it, but I haven't even played it much anyway. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it, okay. I think the funny thing is that without you know going into specifics, really, everyone thought it was going to be like some crazy big thing, and it it's not really like <laughs> it's just more of a Nintendo random thing. I don't know. Have you read much about it, Kai? But. Uh... No, I've looked up very little about it, because, of course, you know, most people have actually adhered to it, so there's very little yeah. footage out there, but it just looks like a... I mean, to be fair, credit to them, they called it a playtest, and it looks very, very, very much like an early playtest. <laughs> so, mm. <laughs> at least it was accurate, I suppose. Everyone just got their hopes up. Yeah, everyone was like, it's GameCube games on NSO, or it's going to be something crazy, and, you know, it's not. But, uh... It's, it is interesting, I think, noting 
how, at the very least, how much Nintendo are going in on NSO, which will, in fact, I might as well move the story up to now, even though it happened literally yesterday, because they they recently just announced as part of the NSO subscription, uh, have a Nintendo Spotify. <laughs> why? Like, no, this is great. I've wanted it, but why just announce that on a random Tuesday in, in October? Uh, I don't get it. Like, I'll just say no. that I don't get like this and 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 X two days in a row of like yeah yeah. yeah. Let's just like casually announce it on YouTube. But, like, why? I'm not. Maybe they just don't have anything else to announce, and that's why. But it's just so strange. It's so weird. I don't get it. You know it. what, Kai? We're, we're going to finish this recording and then like an hour later they go announce Xenoblade Warriors or something just out of nowhere. You know, it's uh, <laughs> at yeah. this point. It, it, it's <laughs> it's so random, but like this is really cool. On, on the one hand, yeah, people just want them to add their own music to Spotify. But they actually are making advantage of this because not only is it a platform that, having tested it myself, it works really well. Often with these kind of things, you think like, you know, Nintendo's online on the Nintendo Switch on like, here's our voice chat app. And it's like some weird, messed up version of what should be a really simple process, right? Um, Nintendo mm -hmm. often do that. But this is literally, it's just Spotify. It works really well. It's seamless. It has unique features like being able to mark off games that you haven't played yet as spoilers so that they won't play in playlists. Like, this is actually really well thought out for Nintendo and... It's good? Like, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I actually downloaded it this morning. I used it for about half an hour. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, it's good. I mean, yeah, I'll start with the good stuff. Is like one good thing, it exists. Like, that's, mm. let's get that out of the way. It exists now, <laughs> and like, I listened to, um, uh, well, I think it was one of the Wii music themes, and like, man, the bass was better than I've ever heard it. Um, <laughs> so that's all. that's all really good. Um, and also the spoiler tag thing is brilliant. I think that's really clever. Um, yeah. But man, uh, the first thing I thought is like is that Spotify are they gonna like are they gonna sort of issue a cease and desist or anything? Because this is it's so similar in design to Spotify, and I know there's other music apps that are similar, but mm. like down it's to the UI, so yeah. <laughs> incredibly similar. Yeah, the UI is almost the same. I'm surprised that this is past legal. Uh, teams, but you know, outside of that, um, there's a lack of music on the music app. I feel, um, they, you know, if you look at yeah. the pure numbers, there's probably about a thousand songs on there, but that's there's only total like what 15 games, give or take. Mm. Um, you know, so like for example, they have Breath of the Wild on there, but they don't even have Tears of the Kingdom, which is like their latest big game. Um, there isn't yeah. even, yeah, there's just so many games that are missing. Um, it is particularly for us, Xenoblade, which you know has been lauded as one of the best games musically that Nintendo has to offer, and it's like, why, why is this, why is this series not on here? So that's kind of sucky, but they did say they're going to add them in the future. Yeah, it's the most Nintendo thing to literally, you know, part of NSO. Yeah, have have all your Nintendo sixty four games, but we're going to drip feed you like two every few months. <laughs> you can't just, you can't. We're still waiting on like Smash and. Uh, uh, like uh, a few of the other sort of third party games and uh, like D Donkey Kong 64 and that you know it's been like four years or something of Nintendo or maybe like two or three years of Nintendo 64 online and we're still they're still drip feeding them so this this tracks sadly but um, mm -hmm. hopefully they'll be more frequent and I mean they literally just dropped a um, new game this morning on it uh, Mario Wonder they added this morning which wasn't even right. one of the ones they listed upcoming. So if they're like adding like a soundtrack a day, maybe it's not so bad, but who knows what they're planning. <laughs> yeah, we can't it's... tell at this point. Yeah, I hope I hope it it rolls out quicker than like I said, the NSO games have been dropping at the very least. Because this is a really good idea and even like it's still good to have, like, if you fancy listening to some Mario Odyssey tracks this is way more convenient than loading up a playlist on YouTube, you know, it's still good. But like you say, it, it needs the numbers, so hopefully they keep adding them way more frequently than they have done with other services in the past, otherwise that's going to be a pain. But, uh, <laughs> who knows? 
Yeah, we, we just can't predict it at this point. We have no idea what's going to yeah. happen with what they put out in the next couple of months. Like, Because when a console comes out, you kind of have a pretty good idea. It's like, okay, we're going to have lots of big games from each series slowly coming out, and it's the excitement of which one's it going to be. But we're mm. in that space where it's like, they are still releasing things. You know, they have to as such a big business. But the, the <laughs> they can't just release normal things. You know, no, it's, got, it's, uh... it's got to be weird about it, and that's what we have. So it's kind of fun to just see, like, what are they going to pull next? It is, yeah, and like, I mean, let's be real, we're going to freak out when they do add Xenoblade music. So they they've got yeah. us playing out of the you know the palm of their hands here. They know what they're up to, but it's it is good, just good to see, like, again, this is another thing that's tied to NSO. You know, Spotify, you want to pay for you with no ads and that. It's kind of expensive, you know, but this. Seven pound fifty a year, <laughs> on top of the free games and the online and that. It's like NSO just keeps on winning. Like they and they shouldn't. Don't listen to this Nintendo, but they could double the price and it would still be crazy good value for like people on the family plan. So uh, with this and the playtest, I think it's clear that they're still like putting all their eggs into the NSO basket, and that's going to continue on to the Switch too, which. It's just good news all around because it's, like I said, it's working for us. It's a very good value, so uh, can't complain. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's looking good, you know. Like you say, that <laughs> value for like £7.50 a year, yeah. um, if, you're, if you're doing it right, is looking so crazy good all the time. So, yeah, yeah definitely no complaints there. And another thing it may be handy for, having NSO playing some online Xenoblade Chronicles X together because it's coming to the Switch, Definitive Edition, it's got upgraded visuals that's particularly noticeable are the character models, it's got new story content it seems that may add on to the sort of cliffhanger ending and give it more clarification, that, that seems to be what's been implied here, although I'm not well versed enough in the lore to really keep up with it, but uh, oh man, like, we... We all thought it was going to happen, but then it, it took so long that we started to doubt ourselves. And then, sure, have it while the Switch is on its last legs. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, I didn't think about it in that way, actually. It will end up becoming, like, one of the last big games on the Switch, the original Switch, <laughs> which yeah. kind of implies it's going to be the most redundant, in a sense. But I'm, mm. I'm going to pray that that's not actually the case. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, people are hi like saying maybe it's like a Switch 2 launch title as well, and it's the same day, but I, I think if that was the case, they would have announced Switch 2 by now. I feel like yeah. that's coming later next year, which, I mean, maybe this will run a little smoother on the Switch 2 if it has sort of yeah, built-in upgrades. Yeah, maybe this will be like Breath of the but... Wild, where it released on both consoles and then... Yeah, know. yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. It, it, I think it's quite possible, but if that was the case, it'd be weird for it to... Because that Breath of the Wild, of course, launched on the same day on both consoles, whereas this one, unless they are going to surprise announce that is the Switch 2's release date, you know, if they release it on the Switch 2 like four months later, me who's pre-ordered it and bought it for the Switch is going to be a little bit pissed. But uh, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> unless unless it's like a free upgrade where hey, you can download a free patch to make it a Switch 2 version, in which case that would be cool. But mm. yeah, that's still still up in the air at the moment. But regardless. It's it's here now, and Kai, you're actually going to be able to beat this game. <laughs> yeah, I never beat it originally. So Fake <laughs> Xenoblade like fan, wow. Four and gave up. Yeah, yeah I know, yeah. Uh, it's a long story, it's a long story. Um, but yeah, yeah. no, I, uh, I'll be able to get back to it now, which is good. Um, I think the remaster was really what they needed, because... The, Definitely. Know, this game struggled for various reasons originally, but one of them... Uh, alongside being on the console it was, is, is the UI. The UI was not very good, it wasn't very clear in a lot of places. Like it, yeah. I, I, if, if this game was marketed um, and released as like an MMO game on Steam or something like that, I don't think there would have been any comments about its UI, but um, the text is way too small for like a Nintendo game that's meant to be approachable. Um, yeah, definitely for this kind of game, like you know, visual clarity is everything, and there isn't really much of it. It's a little too advanced. So, hopefully, that's like fixed. That's kind of my number one thing. Um, and yeah. then also, the another big thing was the multiplayer. Is I one of the reasons I stopped playing was that 
it kind of felt to me, I, I know not everyone had this, but to me it felt like the game was trying to shove multiplayer down my throat all the time because I was like, I was constantly getting pings in the game about it. Um, hmm. And now it's like, no, I can actually do multiplayer properly because I'm not just doing it based on the Miiverse or whatever. Like, there's an actual <laughs> real friends list to to utilize. Yeah. So we actually uh, have that's people a feature. online to play it with. <laughs> Which I mean, who was playing it online on the Wii U? Not a lot, probably. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So like, now that's a feature rather than being one that I'm actively avoiding. Um, yeah. It's one where I'm like, oh yeah, I can actually use that now. That's that's going to be quite cool. So, you know, I'm super on board with that. Um, you know, the visuals we've seen are upgraded, uh, so they look good. Um, and mm. I guess we'll have to wait and see with more details on it, because we didn't get much. But, um, you know, everything everything looks pretty good with it. I've got high hopes, so don't look down, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty vague thus far, the trailer. Like I said, the main, like, upgrade you can see is they've redone the sort of facial models, so, like, like they did for Definitive Edition. It's a bit, it's a bit maybe more subdued than that, but they look great. It's definitely a great upgrade. We haven't actually seen things like the UI yet. Um, they haven't gone into that, and I figure, give it like I don't know, uh, December sometime. They'll release like a seven-minute trailer going over all the upgrades or something. You know, we're gonna get that eventually. But given their work on Xenoblade 1 Definitive Edition, and this literally is the exact same logo for the Definitive Edition part of it, yeah. you know, so <laughs> it's copied and pasted straight up. So I feel like this is going to get the same treatment. I think it's going to have improved UI, I think it's going to have better quest tracking like Definitive Edition had, and they've done for free, and even Future mm. Redeemed improve, made steps to improve that kind of thing. Like, they've, with That's every huge, release... Actually, quest tracking. Yeah, yeah, especially for a game with a world of this size of Xenoblade X, because this again, this is the old, the oldest Xenoblade game besides one. You know, so uh, it has the most, it, it has the least amount of upgrades that the Xenoblade series has been getting over time. So it's, it really is going to need all of those. But like I said, they've continuously got better with every new Xenoblade game, be it remake or otherwise. So I don't doubt that's going to continue here and it's going to be improved. And, I mean, even if they didn't, like, just being able to play this game not on my Wii U. I've, I've been wanting to replay this for years, but I don't want to get out the clunky gamepad. I don't want to use that. <laughs> so yeah. this, it's just great that it's here. And even though I did beat it, unlike you, this isn't a game I really fully got into. I didn't fall in love with the gameplay system. I didn't really give it the chance that... I later, I mean, it was the same for Xenoblade 1 for me, I didn't give that the chance at first. But then with Definitive Edition, I really got to re-experience it and properly love it. And it's going to be the same here, I imagine. So, yeah, I am just mega hyped for this one coming out March, which, not too long in the grand scheme of things, my Switch might explode playing it. I'm kind of scared about that. <laughs> like, please well, the, the bloody thing. Switch Have too. Have you seen the compression? <laughs> The compression yeah, port is crazy. It's like the file size is way smaller than previously. You know, fair play to whichever developers managed to make that happen because that's crazy good. Like, well, this is one of the reasons that I sort of thought we weren't going to get a remake of it ever. Is mm. because there were interviews about it years and years and years ago about will it come to the Switch, and the answer was pretty clearly no. It's too yeah. big of a game. We can't afford it. Like, it's not worth it. And that's why I always thought, but then I took, looked back and reflected, and I was like, well, hang on, that was made, like, before Monolith or, or, or any of the Xenoblade series was, like, overly popular. Yeah. Um, I think this was back when, like, Xenoblade 2 was releasing that that interview happened, so the, game, the series wasn't that popular, and now you look at it with 3 and everything, and it's like, oh, wait, no, <laughs> this company's, like, grown exponentially over the last couple of years with, like, really good success. Mm. It does Very make sense so. that they, they now have the technology quite a few years later to compress it and make it affordable, especially with the bigger fan base, to have a bit more confidence. So that was kind of me, like, sort of not not thinking about uh, the fact that time has passed since that interview. So it's been good to see. Yeah, the Xenoblade resurgence, it, it's real. You know, it's a big series for Nintendo now. So uh, getting it, seeing, seeing this love is awesome, maybe... Maybe this means we'll get an X2 down the line. I think it's much more plausible now than it ever was before. Yeah. But, um, yeah, this this is very hype. It's just, you know, we're Xenoblade fans. My only disappointment is that they didn't... 
I wish it was in like a direct so we could have got our reaction. Like I would have freaked out at the moment I yeah. heard that music kick in. But instead, I'm just like, you know, walking downstairs one morning, getting the snack, and I'm like, so I'm posting it. And my first thought is, this is a, this is fake. <laughs> this isn't real. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, it, it is. Shadow dropped. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. We- I mean, you can guarantee, like, you know, when it comes out and when any news happens, we will cover it, you know, we'll do some, oh, yeah. some stuff on the channel talking about it. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it pans out. But yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be covering yeah, all of that. Yeah, we're not, like, neither of us are good enough or have these Xenoblade X, like, knowledge we have of the main series to, like, do a full, like, breakdown of the trailer like we did for free or whatever, you know. Plus, it's just a remake. But, um... It, we're going to definitely be covering it as it launches and as we see more trailers, yeah, we're going to talk about it a lot more. You know, it's Xenoblade, spin-off or not, it's our bread and butter. So uh, it's it's going to be huge. And I, I, my, again, my only real thing is I just kind of wonder at this point, why isn't it a Switch 2 game? It's, it's, it's a weird thing to release a game that actually would make, a, you know, sure, like, you know, Mario Party Jamboree. It doesn't matter mm. that's on the Switch 1 or 2. Power's not going to make a difference. This is the kind of game where, sure, it run fine on the Wii U and it's a port, so it doesn't need a Switch 2, but it could have looked even better on that. So you kind of wonder what they're thinking or what the deal is there, but I don't care. It's it's real. It's I'm going to be able to play it, and that's good enough for me. So uh, <laughs> that'll do. <laughs> yeah, at least it, it exists now, and that's still not fully sunk in for me. So, like... Yeah. Oh man, I can't believe it. They're all on the Switch now, all four of them. The the whole group's there <laughs> now. Now just work on the uh, Zeno Gears and Zeno Saga, right? It's the next step. But uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe one bit. At this point, I I don't know what's left on the Wii U. As like, what what big games? Uh, I've I've only seen people say Wind Waker, and does that really count as a Wii U game? Wind Waker <laughs> and Twilight Princess are yeah, they're they're technically Wii and GameCube games, but those are probably the most requested. Otherwise, I think Yoshi's Woolly World is one people want, but that's nah. about it. Like, there's some others, but not ones that I ever hear people talk about. Like, people who didn't like Star Fox Zero, you know, uh, who wants, like, Mario Party 10 on the Switch? Nobody. It's. I think this is really the last one we're likely to get, I think. And it. And if it's, that's the case, I mean, it's the one I wanted, so I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but, uh, it's just... It's crazy to see. Crazy. To see. It is. It's. It still doesn't feel real. And in fact, I might. I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if this is just a long, like, two-day dream for me. But hopefully, it's not. And uh, <laughs> we'll get to play it in March. But that's that's about it. That's it for our news month of just random Nintendo drops online. I feel like this is. I guess it's. They haven't got enough stuff for like a full direct, as they're like drip feeding stuff out through the, the the last you know embers of the switch so this is what we're getting random yeah. twitter drops but uh <laughs> i do have a question for you in that case though yeah actually do we, does nintendo have any christmas releases i know there's there's um uh, what is it brothership is it brother i guess brothership? Yeah, you know the one brothership yeah i think that's brothership coming out soon but that's it is their last yeah i think that's their their um their winter game essentially i don't think there's anything in december and january we've got um yeah. donkey kong country returns remaster march we've got xenoblade x oh. and unknown time next year we've got both prime 4 and legends za which could be cross-gen games M- even more likely than x i think they could be oh wait can we talk about that actually i feel like yeah. it's worth no. mentioning <laughs> No, go for I it, will yeah. touch on that briefly. Um, Pokemon leaks. We won't go into detail on them here. Oh, but like, yeah, I forgot that happened. Yeah, <laughs> um, basically, like, ev- like everything has leaked for Pokemon. Like all of their previous plans, like a ton of their future plans, scrapped content. Like I think, like full versions of some of the old old um, versions of these games. Like it's crazy. Everything from Pokemon has leaked. The like, funny this thing is, is several terabytes of info. <laughs> as someone who isn't a Pokemon fan, I don't I don't like chase leaks in general. The only bits I've seen from it are the cursed lore bits, which we won't go into here. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I have seen nothing about the games, about their you know the game content or future releases or whatever. All I've seen is cursed lore, <laughs> and that's what people have latched onto. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, it's just like it's it's crazy to me. Um, you know, th this is this is kind of huge in that you know this this biggest franchise in the world kind of thing. Um, yeah. All of their stuff has been been leaked. Every plan that they had. Um, you know, we've seen a bunch of previous stuff, stuff about like Pokemon Z, which you know never happened. Scrapped evolutions, you know, Pokemon lore, mm. of course. Um, and then even their future stuff, like a bunch of stuff from from the new Legends game, as well as beyond that. Um, you know, in Gen 10, uh, so much information has just like leaked from I, I guess one place. I don't really know. Um, yeah, no, it's crazy. That's, that's that's a big, big thing. And and like, yeah, I've I've been avoiding. A fair bit of it. I've not been getting into the details because, literally, like every fifteen minutes, something new is being shown, um, mm. and it's kind of weird to me that there hasn't been anything official from Pokemon about it. So, you know, that's that's yeah. kind of one aspect. Um, so I, I really, really wonder what this is going to do for them going forward. Because you know, the thing is, ninety-five percent of the people who buy Pokemon won't even know that this has happened. Oh, for um, sure, yeah. yeah no, this is even, like if, you're, if you're not on Twitter, you don't know this has happened. <laughs> yeah, even me, who is, you know, like I said, I'm not a Pokemon fan, but I'm big into the Nintendo community. I see bits online. I haven't even seen much of this. Besides the lore bits, I haven't seen any things pop up in my feed or whatever. So it's, you have to dig for it. To, you have to want to see it, basically, to, to really get into it. But um, yeah, it is wild much. that it happens, yeah. Like, it's out there. So I think really yeah. the... The best they can do is ignore it, really. Like that's like you say, most people won't pay attention to it, so it's probably their best strategy. But you do wonder if this will affect anything for them going forward on plans or that. Probably not, but it is wild. Yeah, and and of course, largely this is a bad thing because oh yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, imagine like you've been working on on this, you know, any of these bits of info for for years, and then suddenly it's all just leaked out before you can show it yourself. Um, yeah, no, it sucks. you know that sucks for them. On the flip side, though, there's a lot of, like, old info that isn't relevant in any way before. That is just kind mm. of, like, fun facts. You know, anyone who likes learning, like, little details about behind-the-scenes stuff in games, this is an absolute haven. And for yeah. stuff like that, there really is no disadvantage to it being leaked. You know, as much as some of the lore bits are cursed, you know, obviously most <laughs> of it isn't. And it's actually yeah, really yeah. interesting, the kind of stuff that they have planned. You know, you get to see things like scrapped areas from previous generations, and you look at that and go, well, it doesn't really matter. It, like, it's not going to disadvantage yeah, it... anyone that I know that, and it's actually really cool to see. So it in does that make way, you... it's actually, like, for lore yeah. fans and that, and, and fans of all the, the wider stuff, it's actually really cool. <laughs> if there's anything good they could learn from this, it's, it's, which they won't, but, you know, it's like like Pokemon and Nintendo, they're so, like, close-cut, they, they don't reveal any of their, like, behind-the-scenes stuff, but... People would love it, like a documentary on some old scrap Nintendo ideas, or just like an art book of like... We sometimes get little bits on like, here's a Breath of the Wild art book with some leaks, or some, you know, concepts. But we don't get a lot of it, and that kind... There's, there's value in keeping some of it that you might reuse, but generally, they could release information about like, their old NES games and the, the design stuff from that. That would be really interesting and fascinating, but they, they keep it all closed up, so yeah, hopefully... Maybe they release some of this in an actual official way someday, you know, uh, that would be nice. It's not likely, though. <laughs> no, yeah, it's just, it's interesting. It's an interesting read from time to time, so... Yeah, that, yeah, that's about all I really wanted to say about it, is that it happened, and it's kind of on a scale of something that I don't think has ever been seen before in terms of video game leaks. Like, this, I, I would maybe argue this is the biggest video game leak of all time. Um, it's up just there, Just in yeah. terms of the sheer size of it. Um, it, maybe not the impact, but still, like, it's it's mad. It's been a wild month, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah. I think, I think we've about covered it until, you know, I'm just, I'm gonna keep an eye on Twitter. This entire recording, mm -hmm. just in case Nintendo are like, yeah, here, have Mario Odyssey <laughs> 2 coming out before the Switch 2 launches. But, um... Christmas release, imagine. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised at this point. Uh, but that, you know, that, that withheld, let's move on to our final segment of the podcast, Games Time Baby, where we talk about any games we've been playing. And Kai, I'm going to actually put you up on the spot here. Did you think of something to talk about? <laughs> no, I've just got my, my two games that I've been playing for months now, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you own those two games, Kai. You do it. <laughs> Alright, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll talk about... Uh... 
let's go with Nino Kuni 2 first. Um, yeah. So I've been I've been streaming this, and I will save my full thoughts for when I've beaten the game. But I, I do kind of know what's coming, so you yeah. know, I, I won't give spoilers. But yeah, it's, it's not a huge surprise. Um, yeah, I've been streaming this for a couple of months now. Uh, I think since like end of July, even um, longer yeah, than I thought. Yeah, probably. Uh, and you know, it's it's a it's a fun game. It's you know, big big fantasy world and, and RPG battles, and there's a story technically and. Uh, you know all of this stuff, and it, it's a good time. You know, I like just getting things mm. completed. So, um, you know, it's good to just go through that and talk. Um, I, I, <laughs> I have my issues with the game, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, they removed a lot of things that made the first game so great, like your familiars. Um, I don't mind new, the new combat, but it is different. Um, yeah. The story <laughs> is like the most formulaic thing you've ever seen. Um, it is, yeah. Yeah, it, there's, there's a lot of places where the game falls flat, but it is a fun like thing to do in the background. I'll, I'll give it that. Um, mm. So yeah, you know, I've, I've been working my way through that. I'm about, uh, I want to say I'm like three quarters through the game now, uh, sort of nearing the end. Um, so, you know, I, I, I wouldn't recommend it as someone for someone to actively play, but if you're running out of ideas for what to do, then... It's there, <laughs> you know. It exists. I'm sure a lot of yeah. other people like it more than I do. So you know, maybe it's just a personal thing because I'm like very nostalgia-driven for the original game. I um, just hate lofty. But it is there. That's all. <laughs> Want to punch him? Lofty yeah. is there. I've actually warmed up to lofty. I, I didn't like him at first, but I've actually I don't know. Still nowhere near droopy, but no. I do. I do kind of. I think he's all right. <laughs> I disagree, right. but go on. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I don't know, there's just something about the game where I feel like it lacks a bit of soul. Um, I can see that, yeah. Yeah, from what I've like been watching. It, it does, it derives a lot from being so formulaic and like, you know, it feels like it's not even the same people who have made it. It was a level 5 game and I always applaud level 5 for everything. Um, yeah. But like, you know, it feels like there was an entirely different group of people who just kind of heard a synopsis of the first game. And we're like, oh, what can we make that's like really efficient and just gets it out the gate really quickly? Um, yeah, because rushed, this game kind of. doesn't have anything like no no real depth to it in any way. Um, mm. The only thing I will say it does particularly well is its side quests are vaguely interesting at times. Like a lot of them do have their own little stories and bits. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't pay attention to them very much. <laughs> um, you know, I try to, but when there's so many of them, they all have a ton of dialogue. I'm just kind of like, oh, okay, what do you want me to do? Fight something or collect something? Um, yeah. So, you know, I, it's it's just one of those things. Um, but yeah, no, regardless, it's not like a, it's not like I don't enjoy playing through it. It's still enjoyable, um, but it does it does lack that certain something that the first game had. I can see what you mean, yeah, it's just, it, it, it kind of lacks that heart in a way, I guess, it's that kind of, it, it is, mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't be fair to call it like a soulless cash grab, because it's got more to it than that, but it's got traces of that, you know, is what I would mm -hmm. say. It, it, it's, it is an attempt to repeat what worked, but without truly understanding what worked about the first game, which means it, it, it ends up coming across a little lacklustre. At least that's from the perspective of someone watching it, not playing it. But uh, that's that what I that's what I would say about it in general. So it looks fine, but um, not going to blow your socks off. Yeah. Yeah, I think this came at a time where level five was not doing so great. Like, I think they just gotten out of their phase of um, just making a ton of mobile games, and they were kind mm. of like. Like, they're like, oh, how, wait, how do we make a real game again? So maybe that's why it's like they they went for a real dark period, and this released during that time. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's it's whatever. You know, it's still like I say, it's not a bad game. I think a lot of people would enjoy it. Um, so th this is just me, like very much preferring the first game. So play Nino Kuni One, please. It's really, really, really good. It's been remastered on like everything. So go play it. <laughs> Goes on sale pretty often as well. So uh, yeah, not it a bad. Does. Not a bad shout. <laughs> Maybe even with the level 5 resurgence, we'll get Nino Kuni 3 if they decide to actually release there a game. There is a Nino Kuni 3. <laughs> okay, we're not talking. Game. We're... No, 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 that doesn't exist. <laughs> it doesn't exist, okay, fair enough. No, never that heard of it, Kai. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm never covering that on here, let me tell you that right no, now. No, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> 
but um, <laughs> yeah, I guess I can talk now a little bit about um, what I've been playing, and I, I managed to beat uh, Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, which, you know, finally came out, of course, mm. the first new 2D Zelda in, like, since A Link Between Worlds, if you don't count Triforce Heroes, so it's been a while, and it, it's really good. I, I had a really fun time with it. I think, for me, I didn't enjoy it as much as some others, and I think part of that is I kind of just wanted a more traditional Zelda game, where you play as Link, you have your different items, you know, you switch between, more combat focused. This game is very different, and it's very clever with what it does, but I personally feel like the gimmicks start to wear thin a bit. But that doesn't stop it from being a great game. And, I mean, just, just the fact, you know, you can play a Zelda, that's really cool. It looks good, the art style is really cute, bringing back that Link's Awakening HD. It's um, music's solid. I think I enjoyed it even more than other people did. I think there's some really great uh, pieces in there. It's just sort of a very cute, fun, vibey game. I think it kind of lacks a bit in terms of... Because the gameplay, ultimately, you know, you've got your echoes. And you can summon them to make things fight for you and to solve puzzles. Mm. In the first place, it means combat sort of drags when you're just waiting for things to kill for you, right? I mean... Right. Really, it's summon these enemies, then stand around while they do things, and try not to get hit. And there are ways you can counteract that. It is kind of satisfying, and like even towards the end, like I, I beat the final boss with just my mob of like six moblings thrown spears, like the most basic <laughs> enemy. And I was like, yes, my boys kill my personal army. It was kind of funny. <laughs> uh, there's, there's some sort of satisfaction in that still. But ultimately, again, you I you kind of find what works and then you stick with those for most of the game. You might switch to certain enemies for certain circumstances, but generally you just find the one you like and just spam that and it works. So it kind of begins to wear thin. And whilst the puzzle solving is kind of satisfying of like the different ways you can create like, you know, your beds, piles, you can create like different water stacks to like swim through. Ultimately, Compared to Breath of the Wild and that, which is this has been compared to in terms of its like creation, solve puzzles in any way you want, you really can't solve puzzles in many different ways. It kind of comes, or you kind of can, but they're all very basic. Like you find, once you find a spider enemy that walks up a wall and you can attach yourself to it, that's how you get up every wall for the rest of the game. You know, <laughs> once you find your bed, the bed is like the most useful tool to cross a gap for the rest of the game. You don't just. Technically, like, yeah, you could use a plant pot instead, but that doesn't change how you play, really. It kind of still is the same game at its core. So I feel like right. there's not as much depth to it as it, it comes across, and maybe that's just me being not creative. But I do find that it kind of did begin to wear thin towards the end, and, and it's still fun. Like, solving those puzzles with those mechanics was still fun. But even things like the, the, the ability where you can like move objects around with Zelda or attach yourselves to them, you every like use of it you see in the trailer. The trailer shows like your uses for it, where you attach yourself to a moving platform, and it brings you across a gap. The game doesn't do anything more clever than that, and that even comes down to things like the final boss, where I thought they were going to do some crazy gimmick for it, like the final boss was going to have what well, I guess what an equivalent of um, Think Mario Odyssey. Where, oh, okay. spoilers for Odyssey, I guess, where, you know, you, you're fighting Bowser, and at the end, you've got the capture mechanic where you're like, wait, can I take, take control of Bowser? And you can, and it's sick. There's nothing like that for the final boss, where there's like a, a cool use of the, of the echo mechanic. It's kind of a bit basic. Just spam your moblins. <laughs> it was basically that, yeah. It, it, so it was still fun, but it never did anything crazy with the mechanic. It, it pretty much stayed to how you see it in the trailer. And that's fine, and that's fun. Especially because, you know, they're good dungeons, there are cool little NPCs, there's cool villages. But it's nothing mind-blowing. It's a fun little novelty, and it's a good game. But to be honest with you, I wouldn't want a sequel. I want the next 2D Zelda to be traditional. I think this was a fun novelty, but I don't think it has much substance in it compared to what you see in the trailer. What you see is very much what you get. And that's a good fun game, but it didn't blow my mind. But that's fine, you know, it was good. So I'd recommend it, but... um. Especially as I think some people enjoyed it more than me. But for me, it's like, good game, but the novelty wears a bit thin, if you get what I mean. Hmm. Yeah, that's, I think that's fair. You know, I, I haven't had a chance to get it myself, but I, I sort of saw that being mm. the case of, like, 
you know, for yeah. combat, for example, Zelda's traditionally got a lot of combat in the games. What are you going to do when you don't have a sword? You know, it's a cool idea of like, oh, you've got to do something other than slash all the time. But then once you've got one reliable way of killing things, you're like, oh, okay, so this is just a slower sword. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, obviously you... some enemies are going to have some unique features, but largely once you've figured out a good reliable attack, it's just going to be a slow sword. Yeah, and if you've watched the trailers, you know that there is a sort of a sword fighter form you can use for Zelda temporarily, where she kind of plays like Link. But it's, mm. it's well, not only is it more basic than traditional Link, it also, it's limited, you know. But it's kind of more fun, so <laughs> it's kind of like, why not just have a game where you play as Link? It, that almost like, why not just do that yeah. again? Or at least give it an option, or maybe something where you switch between both or something. I will say they I do was just some about cool to stuff. say that, like in future games, just have a Zelda mode where you play a Zelda who can summon things rather than use a sword. Yeah, and they do actually do some cool things with Link in the story, so it's it's fascinating. It's a good, interesting game. But I'd say it's like yeah, it's a it's a seven out of ten, which is great. That's a good score. It's just not to like the peak of like a Link Between Worlds is still miles ahead in my eyes. Like that is still right. peak two D Zelda. But it's fun still, fair. and that's yeah. that's pretty much all I've played. Kai, do you want to talk about anything else? Or yeah, I'll cover uh, Rebirth. I still haven't beaten yeah, it, so it. I'm not going to give spoilers. Really, I'm I'm in. I guess I guess the the idea I'll give for people is I've just entered the fifth area slash completed the fourth like big open area. It's um, a long game. It is very long. I'm <laughs> I'm like eighty hours in maybe. Um, partly because I often leave the game paused, but um, yeah, no, yeah. It, it's it's been really fun. Still, um, I was I was very worried about feeling burnt out, and I haven't yet, luckily. Yeah, that's um, good. I think I've been pacing myself well enough. Um, that's smart. I think yeah. it becomes a problem when you try to rush through it, which is probably what I did towards mm. the end. So it helps to just enjoy it at a leisurely pace. I would say, yeah, it's a good way of doing it. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I've just been having a great time, and like, I, I I can't remember if I mentioned this in the last podcast or not, but there are so many mini games. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, and I love that. I'm I'm super super on board with that because I I've, I've really mm. enjoyed basically all of them. Um, I can imagine some people getting very annoyed at them, aka the people who just want to like plow through the game as quick as they can, like from beginning to end. And then complain yeah. of like, oh, why are you making me play a mini game? And it's like, well, do you do you not not want to have fun? Like, is that not the point? <laughs> like, you don't want any mini games. Um, Let me be a I frog, digress. damn it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, I find it fun though. I've really enjoyed the combat with like every character so far. There's not really any that I've not enjoyed. Um, mm. Uh, yeah, no. So that that's all been fun. And like I say, every mini game's been good. Um, one of my favourite things is just levelling up as many materia as possible. <laughs> like as yeah, soon as a materia me- reaches maximum level, I don't use it anymore. Um, <laughs> so that's been that's been really fun. Um, so yeah, overall, it's just been it's been very good to be a completionist um, in this one. You know, the, there's yeah. a very clear way they track it in the open world areas, um, which is nice, you know, they do reward it for you in a sense. Um, so it's just been been good to sort of go through that, you know, all the side quests are good and there's really not that many, you know, there's only like around five per area, which I think is really reasonable. Um, mm. You know, so it's, it's, it's just been really good all round, and like I know I said last time, this might be what I think is like one of just the best RPGs of all time. Um, because yeah. I, I'm not even particularly a huge fan of Final Fantasy or Final Fantasy VII. Like, I never played the original. Um, but just from the perspective of, like, the visuals, the sound, the gameplay, like, everything is in just complete top form. You know, it's rare that you get a game that does everything right and then some on top of that whilst being so big. Um, so I, I'm still kind of holding that opinion of, like, wow, it just does everything right. My only issue is it still crashes for me every half an hour, and I don't, <laughs> I'm like, I need it's... to consciously save. And there's been several times where I haven't, and I've lost like an hour of progress. It's funny because you talked about it last week and uh, last month, and I think you cursed me because the game I'm currently playing, Danganronpa Three, which I'll get to next month, is also keep crashing on me. So we're both having that experience now. <laughs> <laughs> 
it seems to be yeah, spreading. <laughs> it, it's a little annoying, but then again, it you know, it's not the end of the world because I am consciously saving. Um, and, yeah. and there are there are auto saves at times. Um, yeah, yeah Danger yeah, One for no, Free doesn't I, have that. <laughs> yeah, you know, you've got to manually do it every time. Yeah, um, uh, but yeah, but yeah. No, I, I've just so I've just been having a really good time of rebirth. I do think I'll beat it before the end of the year, um, mm. which is which is good. Um, and you know, I'll of course give my full thoughts probably with spoilers at that point when I've beaten it. Um, yeah, and, you know, we'll add a tag when the time comes. But for now, like it's just really fun, really enjoying it. I've I've really you know only got good things to say about it on the most part. So yeah, it's been it's yeah. been a really good time. Yeah, I'm very glad to hear that. I, I want to sort of go back to it myself at some point, honestly, and sort of give it a bit more of a pacing at the end. I think you still haven't reached the point where the pacing got too bad for me yet. So it'll be interesting when you get there. But um, but yeah, no, I'm glad you're enjoying it. And it's like, even like even again, even though I had some problems, it still might be my game of the year. It's up there. It's a great game. It's What it accomplishes for RPGs is incredible. And you've still got lots of crazy stuff to come. So... Uh, Mm-hmm. It's a it's a ride. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to it. But that is pretty much it for this month. So I'll wrap things up quickly because I've got a bit of a cold and my throat is starting to die. So thank you for watching. <laughs> you can stay tuned to a bunch of jokers here on YouTube or Spotify for audio only versions of the podcast and reactions to any directs if they do any and just stop releasing things on Twitter, which who knows. But of course we'll be all here on bunch of jokers. And Kai, where else can people find you at? Uh, twitch.tv forward slash Vaskarine. Like I say, I'm nearing the end of Nino Kuni 2, so I'll always be there to chill. Absolutely, there'll be a link in the description below. And thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, and goodbye. See ya.